Oh, boys and girls, my name is Mike Kelly, AnimatorsForum.com, as well as uh, the Rune Illusion Forum. So, uh, I was going to actually give this <laughs> away as my Christmas gift. Um, so, in a few more days, because I'm still working on it. But, because somebody asked about it on the forum, or I think, or yeah, they asked about it on the forum. And so, I said I'd provide it. So, it's, think of it as an early Christmas present. Um, something you can use as opposed to an animation. A lot of people make this Christmas present. This is my, um, about the hair tool. I'm going to give you away the blender file that creates, for me, that's kind of my template for creating the hair. But I want to discuss how to use this in some more detail about this. And I also want to talk about, in general, um, just some tips and tricks about hair, okay? I've created some pretty good hair with this. I'm getting better and better all the time. Uh, but it's a learning curve. It's a learning process. It's going to take you a few weeks, I would think, to get really good at creating hair. But after that, I think it's going to be a piece of cake, basically, with this plugin. So, so what we have here is we have this is a CC3 head character that I uh, character head that I took in. I took the ears off. The reason I took the ears off, and you can you can bring them in here if you want to see them, uh, is that uh, when you're drawing particle hair on, in Blender. Anything that, that conforms to the surface that you're drawing on will will move around the hair, so the, the, um, the, the thing that you're drawing on. So as you draw hair here, the, the hair will then fly, fly out over these ears if they're attached to that same surface you're drawing on. Um, inside of iClone and CC3, the hair physics will take care of that. So you really don't need or want the ears in the way, but if you want to see them, you can leave them up here that because they're not on this surface. They won't interfere with the drawing of the hair, or you can just take them off, just either way. I've also included my hair mesh uh, template, which is the skull cap, basically. Uh, this is the thing that you're going to want to also import in to uh, cover the base of the hair under most occasions. There's sometimes you don't, and we can talk about that too, maybe if not in this video and other videos, but uh, most of the time you're going to want the skull cap in there too, but you want to keep that off while you're working with it, okay? So now we have basically what I've done is I've defined various uh, vertex groups here to help you draw your hair. So, for example, I have the mustache vertex group, and you can see how that is, and just a, just a lot of different ones. I won't I won't go through them all because you can take a look yourself. But um, but you can go ahead and and these are just basic groups for drawing hairs, and then the the main one is the parting of the right and the parting of the left. Okay, so you part the right and part the left, and then the other one you do is you do the entire head without the parts, okay? So basically what happens is when you're going to draw hair, and this is for men's hair, you can you can use it for women's hair. Uh, women a lot of times part their hair down the middle, which most men don't unless they're complete dorks, but um, you, you could use the same template for women's hair, but you still have to bring it in on a male character, uh, for it to fit properly. And then once you saved it out and reapplied it to a female, it would, it would fit. Um, but I'm really not interested in female hair. And, and those of you that are, maybe we can talk about that at a later point. Uh, but I have plenty of hair for the females. It's just the men's hair that's hard to get. So what you would do as a general uh, process here is you would start off. With, well, let's go. We'll start off and I'll show you the uh, go back to object mode. And, and I'm going to define more vert groups as I go and refine these. And I will keep putting different versions out. I'm going to give you a link where you can download this. And it will get updated. And, you know, if you're interested, send me, drop me an email, and I'll try to keep you informed on a list. So what happens is, and I'm not going to go through this like I did on my other videos, so you don't need to know everything. But I'll give you the tips and tricks on this that I've learned in the reasonable meantime. Is you're going to add a particle group, set it to hair, okay? You want to start off with a fairly high number of hairs, um, depending upon the group that you're going to use. If it's just that a beard, like a mustache or a beard or some small group of hair, uh, 1,000 is plenty. It may even be overkill. You may, may not need that many, five or eight hundred. You'll have to experiment yourself. But for more of the hair uh, quantities, you're going to want to bump this up. You know, maybe 1,500 is nice. And you always want to change the seed. The reason you want to change the seed is that the seed put places the different hairs in different spots. And if you're going to want to do more than one overlay, and I think I've talked about that in other videos, uh, you want to use different seeds for each one. So it's just a good habit to get into to change the, the seed on there. And the last thing we want to do is change the segments. But whatever you do, don't use the arrow on that because that'll blow up Blender. For some reason, it blows it up. Uh, eight segments works about well. What The segments is the number of different uh, 
points or vertices that the hairs are divided by. And the, the more segments, the better it will curve and comb. For shorter hair, you don't need very many segments. For longer hair, you need more segments for it to comb evenly. Uh, we want to turn on hair dynamics. That way it will stay apart from the object that it's being displayed on. And then the last thing we do is we go in and we pick the, the group that we want to do. So uh, if you're going to do, like, say, the part left, okay, so hair's on that side there. What I would then tend to do is you go into particle edit mode. And I always want to comb it first before I turn on the hair grooming, the interactive. The hair grooming is actually going to show you the strands and the hair grooming, but it kind of slows things down a little bit. And even on my fast machine, and I have the fast Titan, uh, it will slow things down. Plus, it's just for me, it's not as easy to use. But whatever, whatever you guys want to do. Now, remember, when you're parting the hair this way, it doesn't part over this direction. It goes this direction. This is where the part would be on that side. So you're going to comb it always over from that from that end. If you think about it, that's how you part your hair, and then the other hair comes down on that side. So this is just drawing the top of the hair. And the other tip I can give you is when you zoom out, you notice your cursor stays about the same size, but it, its effect gets bigger. So that's an easy way of having to change the effect of the cursor without having to constantly change the radius up here. So the radius always stays at 50 points, but when you zoom in and zoom out, it gets more um, precise uh, because the cursor itself is then smaller in relationship to the head. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, you know, playing with this because I don't want to uh, bore you. And I've already done this in other videos. And, and this does take a process. I would say if I wasn't talking while I was doing this, I think it takes me about, I don't know, maybe five minutes for each particular hair group. So if you're going to create a, 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 a fully functional hair piece, then maybe it's going to take you 15 or 20 minutes to get something really nice. But uh, but everybody, like I say, your skill levels will improve as you use this, and everybody's different. And mostly it's a matter of make sure you look at it from all different areas. You've got a lot of different tools here. So in this particular case, I might want to lengthen the hair. So you want to lengthen it out. You just kind of, you know, press it like that and lengthen it as you go. And you can you can do all kinds of stuff. You can cut the hair, you know, so if you lengthen it too much you can you can cut it back down every time you lengthen it you'll have to then comb it again uh, so we'll do that but I'm anyway I, I just wanted to show you a little bit about what we're doing here for this process and like that okay yeah something like that I, I don't want to go too far I would probably spend a lot more time puffing this up and then once I got a basic general edit then I'm gonna go into the interactive grooming it's turning on that I'm gonna adjust the strand width so you notice that that makes it make sure you have tilt alignment on this is by defaults so that are on make sure you have generate the children and include the parents of children so you have all those settings on that should give you reasonable hair and then after you've done that you can then comb it a little bit more try to get the the strands exactly the way you want it again this is this process generally should take you five or ten minutes depending upon the the look of the hair and how good you are at doing things and uh, you know Anyway, whatever. And then once you're done with that, you do your control keys. I'm sorry. You first change it back to an object. Select that object. And then do your control keys to bring up your, your menu here. And before you change them into mesh ribbons, you might want to uh, align the curve tilt again. Make sure it gets aligned. Basically what that does is it aligns it to the object that it was drawn on. And I also like to smooth the tilt. Uh, not necessarily smooth the cure, but smooth the tilt. Didn't really do much there. And then the curve ribbons too. And, and you have those things up here also if you want to do them. I just kind of screwed up by making my thing go this way. I, one thing I don't like about Blender is I get, I guess mess up. I get my things wrong. Anyway, uh, so then we go and we go change them to mesh ribbons. And hopefully that did it. Oh, I didn't have it selected. There. Okay, now it's mesh ribbons. And now I've lost, for some reason I've lost my uh, my view of this. Hang on a second. Back to previous. Okay. Uh, Blender and me are just still not completely friendly <laughs> yet. <laughs> just, I'm not really a, a Blender guy. I'm a, I'm a 3D Max guy and an iClone guy. Okay. So now we've converted it to mesh. So now what you want to do is you want to turn on that hair cap because we want to export that. We want to turn off the body. And if you have the ears on, you want to turn those off too. And then you want to select everything and export this. Okay. So I go to File and export it as an OBJ. OBJ we want to export it as. 
and uh, we'll just make this test again. And then I have a preset that basically the preset is selection only because I only want to export selections of things. And objects is OBJ groups. Very important to have it this way if you export more that hair cap and the hair because you want to keep them separate. And then the scale, you want to scale it up to two. Okay, export it to two. And then when we bring it in here, we go ahead and create an accessory. Accessory. Accessorize, accessorize, and then it'll come in, and it comes in aligned perfectly to whatever the, the male character. Now, you have to have that CC3 male already set up, so make sure you use the CC3 male. And I always use uh, the, uh, da, 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 what am I using? I'm using the, let me get back to the characters, just to show you. I'm using this base character. Where is he? Avatar. Avatar, somewhere here. Base this guy's my default, this CCDH Kevin. You have to use him because his hair will not align any way else. So make sure you use him either as your default or you drag him over into your scene. And you want to do that because once the hair's aligned to the character and you save it out, then you can apply it to any character and it'll auto fit. But you have to use this character in your scene because that's the character I used to start off with. Sorry if you don't like that, that's just me. <laughs> but I like him, he's my favorite character. Uh, okay, so what else do we have to do? Then we have to adjust the, the actual textures here. What I generally do, and I'll provide the textures as well in a zip file so that you can use them and you can... Uh, when I, what I do is I usually have hair already in the scene that then I can just use the paint bucket and apply it to this new hair. So it's just a little easier for me to do that. Um, that way I don't have to, uh, to worry about it, but you can figure out however you want to do it. Uh, if you've got a better way of doing it, then uh, I'm all ears. I'm always glad to learn things. But if, if you don't, then this is not a bad way to do it. If I can get it selected right. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to select it because I'm already selecting other things here. Let's see if I can get it selected. No, I can't. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to supply all of the things that you, uh, that you need for, for that stuff in there. So that you can... Uh, 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 I think it's okay for me to supply this stuff. If if not, someone will uh, will hurt me. And uh, but anyway, that's the idea. You just generally layer your hair in there, and you'll notice that sometimes you know when you have bald spots, like when I put like I have a bald spot here underneath here, then I need to fill this in. So I can go ahead and I can export more hair, and you can always combine the hair once you exported it all in and it's fit up really nice, and you like it the way it is. Then you go ahead, if you have more than one, you select more than one and you go up to modify, modify, and you go to uh, merge accessories. So it merges them all together. And then the last thing you do, because it is hair, is you go ahead, transfer skin weights, and you create and you make it into hair. Okay? That's the last thing I do. I know I'm not going to do it right now, but uh, that weights it as hair and then it's, then it's hair. So hopefully that covers most everything you need. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and provide all of this stuff for you. So you will have it to play around with yourself. And please let me know if you have any issues or problems or suggestions to make this better. Uh, because the better we make it for all of us, the better hair we have. And I may even share some of my hair as I go along and work. Um, we can do that for Christmas as well. So have a Merry Christmas, everybody. Hopefully this helps some of you, and we'll see you on the forums.